We are having class today. Oh, I've wanted to do this since we began. Uh, in the middle, or virtually the middle, of the Illinois River. Uh, this thing flows uh, all the way to the Mississippi, I have just been told. Uh, a good place to study the Word of God. Someone said this is about as calm as you'll ever see the water. I'd like to think this is the day the Lord hath made. Wouldn't be surprised to have class right here. We will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> John chapter 8 in the Word of God. And this is our last session in that great chapter. I have enjoyed John chapter 7 and 8 immensely. Class, we learned that they are confrontation chapters. One commentary says controversy chapters. Uh, people who are debating, arguing, and accusing our dear Savior. And yet, in my opinion, Jesus has won every argument. He has defeated the enemies in every debate. After all, didn't Paul tell us in Colossians, in him, in Jesus dwells all the treasures of the wisdom of God. Let's get right into our text. John 8, beginning at verse 48. And, and again, we go through verse 59. Then answered the Jews, that doesn't mean all Jews. Uh, there are those in church history who have taken terms like that and used it to build hatred against Israel. All the Jews, no, these are the Pharisees. These are the religious leaders who will not accept that Jesus is the Son of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Oh my, what an accusation. It's twofold. They said, Jesus, you are a, you're not even a Jew. You don't belong to us saying you're the Son of God. Why, you're a Samaritan. That shows us their hatred, their animosity toward the Samaritan people. And on top of that, you have a devil. Thou hast a devil. They've accused him of being demon-possessed. Now, uh, neither is true, of course, but watch Jesus. He's going to refute. Uh, uh, verse, verse 49. Jesus answered, I have not a devil. I am not demon possessed. May I say amen to that. He's the darling son of God, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, John said God gave the Holy Spirit to Jesus without measure. And they accuse him of being demon possessed. That borders the unpardonable sin. In fact, Matthew 12's description of the unpardonable sin, I'd say they probably have committed it right here, attributing the works of the Holy Ghost Jesus' miracles, Jesus' great preacher, to the devil, to Satan. I have not a devil. Oh, I'm going to show you something. There, I have not a devil. I have could simply be the word echo. I have not. Uh, the uh, uh, subject is built into the verb echo. I have not a devil. I have not a demon. But uh, the Greek there says ego. Echo. In other words, it's an emphatic I. This is what I'm trying to say. Jesus says, I don't have a devil. I am not demon possessed. Don't you see it? He's saying, I don't. But there may be somebody in this uh, temple here who does. I don't. But I'm beginning to think you Pharisees are devil oriented, devil possessed. I have not a devil. Listen to this. But I honor my father. I honor my father. Uh, the verb there for honor, that uh, means I, I give him great weight. I give him great respect. I, 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 give, I, I, I want to give all of my adoration. I honor my father. But you, Pharisees, you rebellious, disbelieving Jew, you dishonor me. You won't believe my words. You don't put any weight in what I'm saying you give no credence you give no 
uh, uh, authenticity to the miracles that I have uh, enacted. And they know Jesus is working miracles. Nicodemus. Oh, we, we know you're a teacher come from God. How else could you do these miracles, these mighty works? I have not a devil. I honor my Father. But you dishonor me. Now, may I show you something about verse 49, class? Jesus denied being demon-possessed. He did not refute the other half of the charge, thou art a Samaritan. Oh my, I imagine if a Samaritan sinner read that and said he denied being demon-possessed, but he didn't deny being a Samaritan. He, 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 didn't, he doesn't think we're trash. He doesn't think we're low down. In, in fact, I'll go so far as to say this, Luke chapter 10, I hope I hear an amen. Jesus is the good Samaritan. Yes, he is the good Samaritan. He's the fulfillment of that great parable. Help that man who had gone down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves and was left half dead. I don't have a devil. Verse 50, Jesus says this, I seek not my own glory. I seek not my own glory. You all are calling me a liar. You're calling me a deceiver. And uh, I, I'm not going to defend myself. I seek not my own glory. There's a verse in Proverbs. I believe it's in chapter 27. Let another man praise you and not your own lips. Jesus never praised himself. Jesus never worked a miracle for himself. Jesus, the darling son, uh, John chapter 2, the first miracle that he enacted, uh, he turned water into wine and nobody knew when it happened. Fill those water pots with water and they did. And then when they poured out what they thought was water to serve to the guests, to the governor of the faith, the water had become wine. Jesus could have said, blow a trumpet, I'm about to turn wine. All of his miracles, he does not seek his own glory. Oh my, oh I got to say this. But the Holy Spirit of God, now that's a different, that's a di the Holy Spirit seeks Jesus' glory. And we're about to learn. Uh, 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 look at verse 50. I seek not my own glory, but there is one that seeketh the implication, my glory. There is one that judgeth who I am and who might that one be oh can I tell you it's God the Father God is seeking Jesus glory preacher I don't know if I understand how so when Jesus was baptized God himself audibly spoke this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased that's glorifying Jesus in Matthew 17 at the transfiguration this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased Hear ye him. The Father is seeking the glory of the darling Son of God. Back, back in, uh, in, in John 7, uh, Jesus' brother said, Go to Jerusalem. Uh, show off there. Don't do these miracles in backwoods places and, and let them see uh, who you are. Jesus wouldn't do it. He's not going to. I seek not my own glory. But there is one, God the Father. He seeks my glory and he judges my glory. God watches me every day. God of thy my Father evaluates me every day. John chapter 8, verse 29. We had it a lesson or two ago. And I always do the things. <laughs> I always do the things that please my Father. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says of Jesus, He was justified in the Spirit, justified in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost approved everything that our Savior did. If I get a little excited, I shake the boat and the tripod shakes. I'm sorry for that, class. I just can't help sometimes getting beside myself when I admire the beauty and the wisdom of our dear Savior. Verse 51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keeps my saying. That goes back to last lesson. Letting God's Word abide in us dwell in us. Paul said, let the word of Christ be at home in you. If a man keep my saying, listen to this, it's phenomenal. He shall never see death. He will never see death. Oh, uh, let me rejoice a minute. 
I believed him. I trusted him. I, I, I have accepted his word and his being and his person into my heart. I shall never see death. Now, I think that's talking about the second death. I think that's talking about uh, an eternity in hell, uh, uh, the lake of fire, the bottomless pit. Uh, 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 I will never see death. Well, now, Brother Bagel, somebody's going to say, we'll debate with you there. You are, if the Lord don't come by, you are going to die. They're going to put you in the ground. You're, you're going to die. Yeah, I may die physically, but oh boy, can I say it? Can I get an amen? Death for me will be inconsequential. Death's not going to be the biggest thing that happened to this old boy. Biggest thing that happened to me is the day I got saved by the wonderful, marvelous grace of God. Hallelujah. Uh, if you believe on me, if you keep my word, you shall not see death. And honestly, class, that's more than these Pharisees can handle. They, uh, they, they, uh, verse number 52, Then said the Jews unto him, this gets ugly. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know you have a devil. No doubt about it now. You done hauled off and proved it. You said if somebody will believe in you, somebody will let uh, your word in their heart th that they'll never see death. Now we know thou hast a devil. Listen to their reasoning. Abraham's dead. Abraham's dead. And the prophets, Isaiah's dead. Jeremiah's dead. Malachi and the prophets, and you've got the gall to say, uh, and they'll say, if a man keep, the verb is tereo, guards, respects, protects. If a man keep my saying, he shall never even taste uh, 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 of death. Listen to this. Are you greater? You think you're greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? Uh, and the prophets are dead. Listen to this. Whom makest Thou thyself. Uh, let me paraphrase. Who do you think you are? My goodness. Why, why, what you've just said, sir, is blasphemy. If you'll believe in me, you'll never die. And, and then later, Jesus will go so far as to say, I and my father are one. They're accusing him of blasphemy. Oh, by the way, if Jesus said, and he did, it's clear in the Bible, I and my father are one. If that's not true, it is blasphemy. But I'm here to tell you it is true. Jesus never lied. I don't think Jesus could lie. Titus 1, 2 says God cannot lie. <laughs> and uh, who do you make yourself out to be? Can I answer that? Jesus is not making himself out to be anything. He is who? God declared him to be. He is God, the second person of the Trinity. He is God Almighty come. He's Jehovah come in human flesh. He didn't make himself to be anybody. He is the eternal son of an almighty God. Somebody said this. Believe on me, you'll never die. That is a bold claim. Believe on me, you'll never die. Somebody said, anybody that says that and believes it, said he, uh, Listen now, I'm leading up to something. Anybody that says that and believes it, they're a lunatic. That's the word they use. They said if they're not a lunatic, if they're not absolutely crazy, they're a liar. Believe on me, trust in me, love me, know me, and you'll never die. Or, get this, or either a lunatic or a liar, somebody get ready to say amen, or the Lord, the Lord. The Lord Jesus, the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah God come to earth in human flesh. And my vote, Jesus is not a lunatic. Je they accused him of being mad or being crazy, but he's not. And he's not a liar. He is the Lord. Oh, can I say it in the middle of the Illinois River? Can I hear uh, uh, with the sun shining down and birds all around and, and the peaceful current flowing by? Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is Lord of all. Who do you make yourself to be? He's the I am of Almighty God. Verse 54, Jesus answered and said, and now I'm going to have to do something, class. You'll have to bear with me. I have to look at the timer because I, as time goes by, I need to know uh, so I can pace myself. Jesus answered in verse 54, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. No, that's certainly true. Anybody that uh, 
if you'll allow me the old time experience, toots their own horn, narcissism, brags on themselves, that's of no account. There's no ability there. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me. It is my Father that honoreth me. I got to thinking about that and I said in my heart, uh, how has God the Father honored His Son? This is a thought that came to mind. And I'm not saying it's original with me, uh, but in my studies, and, and the Holy Spirit bore witness in my heart. God honored Jesus at His birth, virgin born. God honored Jesus as a little boy, little baby boy. Wise men, magi came and knelt down, presenting Him gold and frankincense and gifts. God honored Jesus at age 12. He's at the temple. God's given him wisdom. He increased in wisdom and statue and favor. Luke 2.52. God's given him wisdom to talk and ask questions to the teachers, to the rabbis who were on the scene. When his mother uh, and, and Joseph, uh, they had left him behind. When they came back, listen to this. I must be about my father's business. Isn't that God honoring his son Jesus already that wise? That age, and, and uh, God honored Jesus when he was baptized. Jesus coming up out of the water. God said, that's my son. Holy Ghost descends like a dove. That's honor. God honored Jesus in the miracles he performed. Jesus said, it's not my power, it's my father. God honored Jesus in the sermons. He, not my words, these are my father's words. God honored Jesus on the cross. God honored Jesus in the... Uh, the resurrection. I call the resurrection God the Father's report card. Jesus, son, you did an A+. Plus. Up from the grave here, God honored Jesus when he ascended back to heaven. God honored Jesus when he stepped out in heaven. God said, sit at my right hand, the session where Jesus is seated. God honored Jesus even now when he's at the Father's right hand. Uh, God the Father says, intercede for my people. One of these days, I'm going to make all your enemies your footstool. <laughs> That's God honoring His darling Son. And then there's coming a day, oh, can I get an amen, when every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, uh, That's God honoring His Son. Uh -huh. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom you say, Jesus' enemies, of whom you say, He is your God. He is a, oh, that's our God. Uh, we, we believe in the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Whoa, 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 wait just a minute. I'm His Son, and you do not, uh, and, and this is corny, I probably said, like Father, like Son, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you reject the Father, you're, gonna, you're not going to get the Son right. And if you reject the Son, you can't possibly have the Father right. I and my Father are one. He that believes on me will believe on the Father. Oh, if I honor myself, that's nothing. But my Father honors me. And you say, He's your God. Verse 55, Ye have not known Him. Class, that's mighty bold. Ye have not known Him. You do not know my Father. That is point blank. That is bold. And that is the truth. Uh, did you know you can have a form of religion and not be a child of God? Uh, you, can have, you can have a religious experience. Join the church. Put your money in the offering plate and be a child of the devil himself. And it's happening in our land today. You've not known Him. You're religious, but you've not known They fast two days a week, but they don't know God. Uh, they give tithes of everything, including the, including the parsley in their garden, but they don't know God. You've not known Him, but I know Him. But I know Him. Oh, I'd say Jesus knows Him. He knows Him. He knows Him intimately. He knows Him personally. Every morning, God the Father, Isaiah 50 verse 4, gets Jesus up and teaches Him and speaks to Him words to say, to encourage those who are weary and those who are... are, are discouraged. And uh, I, I, I know Him. I know Him. Oh, if there's ever been a son to know the Father, Jesus. Now, 
And if I should say, I know him not, hypothetical. If I should say, I know him not, watch this. I'd be a liar <laughs> like you. <laughs> I know him, but if I said I didn't know him, I'd be a liar. Come to think of it, I'd be a liar like you. Jesus just called that crowd a bunch of liars. I think this section of John may be the equivalent of Matthew 23. The six woes Jesus pronounced on the hypocrites, on the scribes, and on the Pharisees. Uh, they had outward religion. They didn't have the inward Holy Ghost. And, uh, and this is John's equivalent. Uh, if I said I didn't know my father, I'd be a liar like you are. I'd be a liar like, but I know him. And I keep his saying. That's Toretto again. I keep he is saying, I obey, I guard, I put myself in alignment with the word, his saying, with the word of my father. Verse 56, your father Abraham, your father, see they brag on Abraham, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Oh boy, that, that verb for rejoice literally means to jump up and down in delight and ecstasy. He rejoiced. to see me. There was some point in time, we're going to try to figure out when. We're going to try, to try to understand. There was some point in time where God the Father revealed the coming Jesus, the coming Messiah to Abraham. Has to be. Abraham believed God. Paul says it three times in the New Testament. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Jesus just said it. Abraham rejoiced when he saw my day. And by the word day, that does not necessarily mean a 24-hour period of time when he saw my birth, when he saw my life, when he saw my death, when he heard of my resurrection, oh, preacher, Abraham didn't know about the death and resurrection. I beg to differ with you. I believe he did. I'm fixing to try to prove it to you. When he saw my glory, <laughs> and he got happy. <laughs> Can you imagine Abraham shouting? <laughs> Can you imagine Abraham saying glory? Abraham rejoiced. It's demonstrable, physical joy to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. That word glad. A smile came on his face. His, his countenance brightened up and he was glad. Get ready. They can't buy this. Oh, no. And he's done linked himself to Abraham, said, Abraham knew me. And the Jews said unto him, you're not yet 50 years old. Thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? May I go back to the three words I used earlier? Lunatic. That's what they think. Liar, if not lunatic, he's a liar. Let me tell you what Brother Bagwell thinks. That doesn't matter. Let me tell you what the Word of God says. Lord, not a lunatic, not a liar. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord at which my knees have bowed. Lord that my tongue is confessing this very thing. Jesus, the Jews said, thou art not yet 50 years old. What they mean is this. They mean... Uh, Jesus, you only you, you, you hadn't reached your 50th birthday. And Abraham, 2000 B.C., round figures. Abraham, 2000 B.C., my goodness. Why, why, why uh, 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 you, you're no way. The math doesn't work, Jesus. But I want to do, do, do something with that. Look, thou art not yet 50 years old. Listen to me, class. You know, and I know, Jesus is barely past 30. He may be 31. 32 years, he is barely past 30. And yet uh, to them, he appeared to be, you're not yet 50 years old. You say, preacher, what do you say? The burdens that he's carried, the insults that he's endured, the agony that he knows is coming on the old rugged cross so sinners can be born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that has taken a toll on our Lord. That has, that has, I believe, that has aged him. 31, 32-year-old man. Well, you're not yet 50 years old. I'm reminded of a verse in Psalm 69. It is repeated in John chapter 2. The disciples remember it. The zeal of God's house hath eaten me up. 
They said that after Jesus had cleansed the temple that day. The zeal of God's house, and he's teaching in the temple right now. Uh, the, the zeal of God's house has eaten me up, eaten me up. It's aged me. I've carried a burden. Paul talked about all he'd suffered. Then he said on top of that, the care, the burdens of all the churches. There is a spiritual weight to be carried. If you're going to live right, if you're going to serve God, with all, you're not yet 50 years old. And he was 31 or 32. Boy, I'm glad my Lord sucked. Can I tell you something? He lived right, so he died right. He lived carrying a burden. My burden is easy, my yoke is light. Nonetheless, he lived carrying a burden. And he died carrying the weight of the sin of the world. You're not yet 50 years old, sir. And yet, you're telling me <clears throat> you have seen Abraham. The natural man cannot receive the things of God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 3, they are foolishness to him. They're saying Jesus is foolish. Verse 58. Jesus said, Verily, verily I say unto you, get ready, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> before Abraham was, I am. Preacher, you said you was going to tell us a little bit about Abraham seeing Jesus' day. Oh my. You remember the day, it's in uh, chapter 22 of the book of Genesis. God said, take your son, take your only begotten son, I want you to go and sacrifice him. I, I'm, I'm going to have to condense the story. You know it already. Abraham took his boy up to the hill. And he's going to plunge that knife in. And, and, uh, and uh, the angel stopped him. No, there's a ram in it. To sacrifice the ram. And Abraham, the boy, come. that's a father, Abraham. That's a son, Isaac, on that hill, very near, probably where our Lord was crucified. Death. And then God intervened and they came back down. That's a picture of death, burial, and resurrection. Abraham saw my day. Hey, hey, uh, let, me, let me give you another way God may have shown to Abraham, the Lord Jesus Christ. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three generations. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, preacher. And, and uh, Abraham, picture of God the Father. You won't get Isaac, the miraculous son, born. In the, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Father, son, and Jacob. How are you going to get the Holy Ghost out of Jacob? He's a crook to begin with. He's a prince of God to end. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Changes us. Transforms. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Their generations. Father, son, and Holy Ghost. Abraham saw my day. Isaac, death, bear. Abraham, knowing God had said, plunge a dagger into his heart, said to those servants, me and my boy are coming back. No, you're going to kill him. Me and my... Abraham believed that if he had slain Isaac that day, God would have raised him from the dead. Excuse me, I'm rocking the boat. And would have brought him back. Death, burial, and, 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 and Genesis 24, a bride for Isaac. That's a bride for Jesus. The typology is clear. Abraham saw my day before Abraham was. I am. Jesus just said, clearly just said, i got to get my time. I am eternal. I am the eternal son. Before Abraham was, I am. He could have easily said, before Adam was, I am. He could have easily said, before the world was, I am. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning. He's everlastingly the son of an almighty God. I dropped my little card with my verses on it. Verse 59, then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself. Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. All this happening in the temple. Went out of the temple. Going through the midst of them. And so they can't kill him. They can't slay him. They can't touch him till his hour comes. When he'll die on the cross. And then they don't murder him. They think they do. He lays his life down. That sinners. He lays his life down. That sinners can be born again. Oh my. The takeaway for before Abraham was, I am. I think that's the greatest I am statement in all the Bible. In all of the Gospel of John, before Abraham was, I am. I'm glad I got an eternal Savior. 
I'm glad he's the son of God. I'm glad I've trusted him. Somebody say amen. I'm glad he lives in my heart. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.